Well, my last two videos on entire toy lines performed above and beyond my wildest expectations. See you friends, go watch those next. Is this what the people demand? Or maybe it was just that those were much shorter videos. I don't know how many more of these entire toy line overviews I'll be able to do. For starters, it very rapidly burns through your material. I could do literally every toy line since the start of Transformers and literally only be able to make 36 videos before I ran out of all Transformers ever made to talk about. But that's not an option because the completeness of all the toy lines I have looks something like this. Basically, this is going to be the last video I can make before I start having to make massive inferences about the rest of the toy line based on the few figures I have from them. Well, let's go out with the meh, power of the primes, the most mixedest of bags. Prime Masters. Uh, okay, so I got two of these because honestly, why did I even buy two of these? What idiot came up with the idea? We're going to use Headmasters in a line that doesn't use Headmasters, but we're not going to give them faces so they won't do anything. And then you can plug them into giant hands and those giant hands can plug into other robots to make them profit. Hey guys, remember Legends class? Well, I guess more remember when Legends class wasn't 20 to 30 bucks? Power of the Pepperidge Farms remembers. Beachcomber. Took me a while to find this one. Turned out the store where I bought it moved where they were selling the Legends figures for Thanksgiving. So I accidentally stumbled across it when buying other stuff. A nice figure, it looks good in both modes. Transformation is fun, but he does have this big old hole in the back of his alt mode, slash. When I found out they were making a female Dinobot, I obsessed over it for the next few months. I couldn't wait to get my hands on this welcome new inclusion to the team. Not like that. God, why does everything have to be sexy? When I bought her, I was flat broke again, so I borrowed eight bucks from a friend at work. I paid him back the next day in orders. Figure's a little bit of a disappointment. Alt mode is a bit gappy and I don't care for the head. I'd have preferred something a bit more angular. Shrapnel, a re-release of the Generations figure. Not bad, but not thrilling either. Wind Charger, eh, this figure's okay. He's got a sweet Trans Am alt mode, but it's physically impossible to get to hold together and his robot mode has some wonky proportions. Plus his saggy arms are a real letdown. Battle Slash and Road Trap, the two Legends figures that are also a deluxe. I thought for sure they were going to be the future of Legend Scale. The gimmick adds so much extra value to these guys, it's crazy. Unfortunately, it was not to be, apparently. These guys as individuals are okay. Battle Slash comes out way better than his all-too-wide counterpart, and while the gap in the front of his vehicle mode isn't great, it's way better than the pair of underwear hanging off the back of Road Trap. Cannot believe they didn't give him a headmaster port in combined mode. Tailgate. Retool of Wind Charger, same problems as before, but more. Outback. A retool of Brawn, a pretty decent figure, but uninspiring. Cindersaur. A flat repaint of Slash, aka Slash, but worse. Doesn't fit the character, didn't buy, don't know why anyone would. Deluxes. Okay, so this is where we really get to see the mixed nature of Power of the Primes. Basically, we're in Combiner Wars 2, the meh-ening. Starting off, Jazz. I don't think anyone really likes this figure. QC's bad, looks bad, head's terrible, arms suck, legs transform wrong, so it's basically impossible to not pop the joints off. Yeesh. Arm mode's fine, leg mode sucks. Slag. His name is Slag. Shut up. His name is Slag. Don't be ripping off 66.666% of my boy Sludge's name. Let me tell you, I was excited to get this guy in swoop. It felt like an event, an all new official G1 Dinobot team for the first time in decades. I found them at Target on Black Friday, had to wait in a crazy line to pick them up, and uh, they're a little disappointing. Slack here's got no back wings, and he's kind of really simple. Swoop, better, looks better, transforms better, but he doesn't come with wing missiles, and his Dinobot head falls down if you breathe on it. Dreadwind, bought this for about five minutes. God damn, it was ugly. God damn, it sucked. Returned. Blackwing. Did not want, did not buy. Sludge, why is his head square? Sludge has never had a square head. Between him and Slag, I much prefer this figure. He's got his wings, though why is his head square? Snarl, absolutely the best of the Power of the Primes Dinobots. Most fun in transformation, best looking modes, but why is his head smashed? Moonracer, ah, uh, this one. I was really excited to get it. It's funny, when I was a child, I was pissed off there were girl Cybertronians. Now I'm like, hell yeah, bring on the girl bots. Get girls into the fandom, welcome all. Sad to say, this is a very flawed figure, and I don't know that we needed five versions of it. As limbs go, it makes a pretty fantastic leg, very clean. Arms decent too, but I wish the legs were a little more substantial as a bicep. Ripper Snapper. At first, I didn't give a shit about any of the Terracons, but then I picked this one up, and damn, these are the standouts of the line. Really cool figures, this one's probably my favorite of the limbs. Sinner Twin. Am I the only one who thinks he looks like he's from an 80s German synthwave band? I'd have liked it if the alt mode heads posed a bit better, but he's fun. Blot, my second favorite of the limbs. He's just a cube of anger in various shades of purple. What's he supposed to be? No one knows! Cutthroat. Ah yes. Head fall off boy. This is another German looking lad. Looks a bit anal retentive. He's a retool of swoop. Somehow worse than the dude whose head can't stay up is the guy whose head can't stay on. Like the look of him though. Novasar, the only wave four figure in the entire line. That means she's special. She get a special star. Her head is stupid. I want cool IDW head. All right, the Voyagers. Oh God. Oh no. Oh God. Oh no. Grimlock. Oh, this here is a goofy figure. He is so weird. His tail is barely even trying to pretend. This is the best thing he can do. I must go, my people need me. This chest is the most loathsome bit of engineering in the whole line. The combined Volcanicus figure is also total garbo. You flat out require an upgrade kit to get this ugly thing into a state of not sucking. With the kit, he can actually be pretty cool. I like the Volcanicus head a lot. I don't like the intended combined order though. So I make the two burliest Dinobots slag and sludge the legs because those are definitely the two who can withstand the weight of the rest of the team. Then the two most ostentatious ones become the arms. The overall look is impressive. Starscream. Yeah, I wasn't about to buy Popeye Scream. Boy, I really hates it. 
I lead a one. Okay, I actually did buy this, and I do have a fair bit to say on it. Starting off, Swalita 1, top tier. I can get behind Optimus Prime's girlfriend being as jacked as he is. That all said, this mold fiercely sucks. It's an intense retool of Starscream, and boy, that figure was bad. Combined mode on her also suffers as well, though there are two ways to make it look passable. One, the shoulders are high, and that's silly, but you actually have to accentuate the height of her shoulders to make it not look terrible. I don't know why, but it helps. Go big or go home, I guess. Or you can flip her around and go with maximum beat with the burliest combiners for arms. Swalita 1, indeed. Hunger. Now we're talking. This guy looks sweet. Yet another German lad here. I swear, these guys are a synth band. How did they manage to retool Silverbolt this much? Damn, they did an amazing job. And in combined mode, he's also the one figure that looks good with no caveats needed. Just the best combiner in the line. Inferno. I did actually get this, but the stupid animated chid made me trade it to a friend. Leader class. This is where it actually gets good. For whatever reason, in this line, they decided that leader class figures were going to be deluxes with power armor that turned them into leaders. Unlike with Siege, they meant the classical idea of leader class. As in figures as big as the masterpiece line. Let's start with Rodimus. A goofy hot rod with a distressing transformation that stresses the plastic disturbingly. It combines with the trailer in a not very fun sequence with a bit of parts forming. And in the end, you end up with this kind of goofy looking bot mode. Shoulders are in a weird place and are weirdly limited. It really wants to come apart on you, and it's just not all there. Optimus Prime. Now this here. I bought this thinking it looked pretty good, and when I got home and started messing with it, I didn't have an MP10 at the time. I'd actually been saving up for one. I came to the conclusion that this figure was 70% as good as the Masterpiece one, and that kind of freed me. I ended up buying the Shattered Glass MP10 when I never even considered it to that point, because the role of Masterpiece Optimus was being filled so well by this figure. And when I got that MP10, I realized that this figure was about 80% as good as that one. This was a fantastic figure. Where else are you going to get an Orion Pax? And it combines to be a borderline Masterpiece Optimus with forward butterfly joints, in pretty much direct defiance of all other Optimuses ever. Rodimus Unicronus. A rare thing for leader class, a flat out repaint of a figure from a previous wave. It took all my willpower not to waste my money on this. Optimal Optimus. Not bad, not bad. I love the idea that it combines all three of Optimus Primal Swarms. Regular Monkey, Gorilla on a Skateboard, and Big Old Mech. And he's the only one of the three that can be both the smaller and larger robots at the same time. This guy had it all. Not as good as the Prime, but pretty damn good. I did not buy Predaking. I find their design overdone, taxing to look at, and yet tedious at the same time. And I care 0% about the characters. And that's not half of what I have to say, but it's enough of what I have to say. So I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So if you like what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please share this video with any friend you think might be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.